Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan. Thank you for coming to the channel. In a word, WTF. I mean, look at these live bears. They are going bonkers. I need only go to the edge of the tank and they, uh, they just swarm like piranha. Colorful piranha, harmless. I could put my hand in there and I would feel all those wonderful red lipstick mouths upon my finger. Live bears are like um, the Labrador retrievers of the aquarium trade. They're boisterous, they're easy, they're fun loving. Well, I don't know about fun loving, but they, uh, they congregate and aggregate and run around and follow you around. Not all fish will do that. Sure, most fish will get accustomed to who feeds them and tend to gravitate towards you uh, in hope that you will be feeding them. And there's no question that's what these fish are doing. And I did just feed them, so I'm not torturing um, my fish by doing this. It was less than an hour ago when I gave them an ample supply of uh, krill flakes as well as some baby brine shrimp. And there is zero particle particles in the water column. Uh, that's not because of anything other than their voracious appetites. Sure, I can take credit for um, cultivating this water garden and all the plants. And I over filter this tank. I've got the Oase um, 350. You see they're two uh, blue and plastic. And then I've got what you cannot see the smaller one, uh, I think it's the 100, the Filto Smart, the Oase 100. It's, it is a canister, but it has a little attachment you can order from them uh, to make it a hang on back canister. Back in the day when I assembled that, I was having some water parameter issues. Um, and is it any surprise given how much fish are in this aquarium, but the plants and this added little filter and my regimen of 40% water changes every week seem to have turned the trick. I have a very stable aquarium in terms of water parameters. It's 20 plus nitrates and some purists would say that's high, but honestly, the more I live and learn, the more I think that's a perfectly reasonable number Remember, nitrates can be our friends. Plants sure like them. It's just spikes and a grotesque amount, you know, a hundred and over, where it realistically can be a problem. Although if you're like me, anytime it's over 40, uh, maybe we're just being proactive, but I would identify a creeping nitrate level of over 40 as a pro potential problem, if not a problem itself. But being real, a lot of good fish keepers can keep and breed and raise all kinds of different fish with relatively high nitrates. But this wasn't supposed to be a science video. Um, I kind of was just uh, not kind of, I absolutely was just blown away by the symphony of color. You know, it's interesting when fish behave and they're basically rioting, right? They're in a swarm, but it's silent behavior. And when we forget, fish are such a visual treat for us and noises in our fish room tend to be the sign of a problem, usually with our technology, but it's so seldom we actually hear from fish. I know that's sort of an odd thing to say, but I'm an odd sort of guy. I know croaking garamis, a few other species will make clicking noises. Occasionally, any fish, if it sees a little bug attracted to the light on the water, it will 
um, attack it, you'll hear a splash just as if you were walking along a pond somewhere. Oh my gosh, there's a ripple in the water. That must be a fish. You will get a little bit of uh, sensory from your uh, hearing in that regard. But it's so lovely and marvelous and credit to nature that you can get an active swarm of different species. I mean, I've got red and black mollies, different color morphs, platies, sword tails, and they're all, um, well, I use the word swarm because, I mean, is, is it a shoal? Live bears tend to just be so frenetic and their activity so random that I don't think any of them are schooling fish per se. Um, they hang out with one another and usually there's more than a few in an aquarium. So people might uh, misconstrue that as schooling behavior, but I don't think that it is, not in the way we understand it, like with tetras or rasboras, or even even quarry catfish, I suppose, but especially tetras and rasboras where they're defined by either schooling or shoaling or, or um, solitary behavior, like with certain cichlids. Live bears throw out the rule book. They just behave. It's a super modern symphony in that there's no melody, there's no beginning, middle, or end to it. They just, they just are always going nuts. Now when the lights go down, obviously they calm down and they become much more still Maybe a few of them poking along in the uh, cryptocorn here, or the Blixa japanica there. Maybe they even get lucky and find a baby blue dream shrimp and have a nighttime snack. Got a ton of these in the tank. And I see a lot of the little ones when I clean the filter and I save all of them and just put them right back in. Oftentimes when I run the net across these, this uh, ballast area here, to clean up debris that gets caught in it. I will capture among um, baby fish fry. I will also get a lot of shrimp. And interestingly enough, in this aquarium, it's predominantly, if not totally, blue dream shrimp. In all my other aquariums where I keep shrimp, there are the wild um, strain in that they become brown kind of humdrum looking like an Amano shrimp. I'll see some reds, cherry reds, Bloody Marys, etc. But in here, for whatever reason, and I have no clue, it's the blue dream and only the blue dream. It's absolutely the only blue color in this aquarium. As some of you know, when I set this up at first, I had only the white cloud mountain minnows, of which most of them are still thriving. There's one right there. It was the long fin variety. I had a dozen and this was more of a river scape, but over the months and now into its second year, basically second year, about two year anniversary of this aquarium, I added a few live bears that I bought on impulse at a swap. Something spectacular caught my eye, like this German style um, sword tail. Now showing a leer tail, I think that's a female. But, but for all I know, it's a hybrid with one of the platies. I mean, look at that as it swims away. Look at that high fin, that dorsal fin. That great black coloring with the blue metallic speckle, the veal in the tail. This is actually progeny, this gorgeous flowy black and red. I believe that's a sword tail as well. They're more torpedo shaped than the mollies. But I had a couple adults and while the males are not always able to reproduce because of that um, flowy 
tail structure affects their gonopodium as well. I'm sure a female was hybridized with one of these other red sword tails or perhaps a platy in any way you saw something like this. That's one of the miracles of live bearers. The way you can cross breed them and you don't have to be a professional and no one's gonna judge you or disrespect you. Do I think this sort of yellow orange is a little less spectacular? Like that guy right there? Then the deeper red? Yeah, on a personal level I do. But they're all, uh, they're all my babies, as it were. And while I've caught out a bunch of fry, I tend to keep the ones in that I get a sense are gonna grow into something special. Uh, for a while, it was little ones that featured a distinct red and black. Sorry about the focus, like that little one there. And sure enough, some of them grew into a couple of the fish I already pointed out to you. But some lose the spectacular red and become a little bit more peach colored. And if your preference is peach, Lord knows there are plenty of platies and mollies that can accommodate you and sword tails. What else is in here? I have four Hillstream loaches. Haven't found any babies, but they're all very, very happy. A very good and consistent algae eater. Don't don't sleep on um, those loaches. They don't do anything wrong or bad in an aquarium, and they're very so they're very. Um, I was gonna say sociable, but actually they're not. But they're not antisocial either. They don't create any problems. I guess is what I was trying to say. relatively easy to breed too and if they are breeding in here i'm sure their offspring are being picked off by uh the swarm here the red swarm maybe that's what i'll call the title of this video lo the red swarm <laughs> sounds like what you would read on a comic book in the 80s like when i was growing up and collecting comics marvel comics lo the red swarm be some new super villain well there's no super villains in here well maybe him maybe the siamese algae eater but he doesn't create any problems even though he's gigantic and he does a pretty good job throughout this filming have you seen a lick of algae you know what folks i started this video saying i can't take credit for a lot of the things in here and I can't take credit necessarily for the conspicuous lack of algae. The mollies are absolutely, if not the best in the top three algae eaters for a freshwater system and even saltwater if you acclimate properly. Black mollies in the wild occur, and all mollies that are wild occur in water that can um, be 100% fresh to very much brackish, even flirting with salt. And uh, I know for a fact people have kept them in saltwater systems or in their refugium or what have you. And in this tank, they certainly are eating the algae. Now I supplement with algae wafers also because I have a few bristle nose in here. I haven't seen one for the course of this video, but they're in here, including a very, very super red one, redder than most actually. Alas, he's not making an appearance. But I think a trend that's gonna happen, look at this gorgeous black molly. Look at that, With the, it's iconic. It's like if a 12 year old kid were to draw fish for his science class, They'd probably add a flash and a dash. I don't know what he's doing there. He sees me filming and now he's going bonkers. He's not ill or anything. It's just an interesting little bit of behavior as I talked about him. But that iconic fish shape almost 
um, over the top, really. And it is in a sense, fish like that don't generally exist in the wild populations, but they're not man-made like a glowfish. They've just been bred uh, for those characteristics that people like me uh, absolutely adore. I mean, look at that. Black mollies are great, and I think this makes them even greater. I'm sure that black one could easily be reproducing with a red one like that. That one is so red, the camera didn't know how to capture it. I'm not doing anything to this film, and it won't even be uploaded in the highest def possible, I'm sure. Maybe YouTube, maybe I could get better at that, but regardless, it's gonna show like intense red. A little bit of props has to go to the Chihiro's light. Um, full spectrum LED. If you're gonna get an LED light, even a cheap one, I recommend full spectrum so you can capture the colors of your fish way better than just um, the obligatory white and blue. If you have any questions or want to talk about this tank with me or with the community, which I'm so thankful is growing on lush and salty aquariums, ask and ye, sh ye shall receive. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching the Red Swarm. And as always, keep your hands in the tank and ciao for now.